What's the sixth derivative? <coughs> What's the seventh derivative? What's every derivative after that? Zero. This is going to happen for every polynomial. You see, at some point, no matter what you start with, if it's a polynomial, you'll be able to take a derivative, and what happens every time is the, the, the order of the polynomial decreases by 1. So 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then a constant. So that's going to happen with polynomials. Now, does it happen all the time? Think about something that's not a polynomial. I'll give you an example if you need one. How about that? Well, decreasing, because we subtract one, but it becomes more and more and more negative, right? This derivative would, the derivative of that would give you negative 2, x to the negative 3, right? Then you get positive 6, x to the negative 4, and then so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so that actually, that, that exponent keeps on getting smaller, more and more and more negative. So this won't cycle out to zero eventually. It's not a polynomial. So be careful on it. You're not always going to go to zero, but you can find more and more and more derivatives on this. How many people feel okay with our higher order derivatives? So it's basically just take a derivative and then take it again and again and again. That's what this is asking you to do. So where would we be the correct place to stop at 168 or when it reaches zero? Zero. Okay. This is all the higher derivatives because every other derivative is going to be zero. So zero counts as a derivative. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, this, we've taken one, two, three, four, but then you could take this again and get something different, right? You could get five. But then as soon as you take it six, it's not doing, you can take them as many times as you want. You're just going to get the trivial answer of zero after that. Yes? What if it was one over x squared? That is one over x squared. But when you get to zero? No. No. Uh, the derivative of this. is in no way 1 over 2x at all. You're breaking the rules here. There's only one rule that we have. The one rule that we have is it must fit this format, folks. It must fit this format. If it doesn't fit that format, you can't do it. That's it. You need to be able to break it down in such a way that it does fit this format. All we can do is separate by addition subtraction and pull out constants. So in order to make it fit this format, we can't just say, oh, derivative of x squared is 2x. That would be awesome, but no, it doesn't work that way. Instead, you have to say, oh, this is the derivative of x to the negative 2. That fits that format. Do you see the difference there? You have to make it fit that. So you have to pull that negative, that exponent up and make it a negative. That way you can work with your power rule. Does that clarify your question? Okay, so we can't just take derivatives of parts of like quotients. Can't take it apart to products. We're going to talk about those things in just a little while, but you can't just do that. Are you with me on this? Would you like to see one more example? Might be good for you guys to see this one. Take the derivative of all those things. Mm -hmm. Could you take the derivative of this thing? Got your head. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Can you take a derivative altogether? <clears throat> no, not the way it is right now. Let me show you a couple things about this problem. Number one, well, you probably are going to want to make this x to the fifth minus 2x minus 3 all over 3x to the 1 half. Do you see what we did there? You okay with that? That's okay. That's great. That's fine. But here's what you cannot do. This is going to go back to our previous problem. What you can't do, folks, you can't do this. I wish you could, but you can't. You can't go, oh, you know what? This is 5x to the 4th minus 2x over 3 halves x to the negative 1 half. Do you see what I did? I took derivative, 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 derivative. Can you do that? No. No, you can't. They're, they're connected. They're in, they're in a quotient. We're going to find out later. You can't do that. You can't do that one. If you want to write that down, cross it out. If you wrote it down, cross it out. You can't just take it piece by piece if they're connected. You have to be able to separate them completely and take a derivative uh, by, term by term. You can't do that here. You see, you can't separate this and have its own derivative minus its own derivative 
minus its own derivative, and then have it over another derivative. That's something we can't do. We can't do that. So what we would have, oh, give me another option. What could I do? Whenever I have some expression over one single term, what could I do? I can't move that up. I don't want to do that. What can I do when I, whenever I have one ex, uh, several express, several terms over one single factor? Split once it up. What now? Split it up over the. Let's split it up. So sometimes these these daunting looking uh, derivatives that you need to do. What would happen if I did split this up as x to the fifth over this minus two x over this three over that? Let's see what happens there. Then maybe we'll make it fit into our, our scenario that we can work with. Firstly, are you okay that this doesn't work, as a matter of fact? You can't just take all these pieces if we have a quotient or a product or something crazy. The only time we ever found out that that did work was this. Look, when I had a polynomial, yes, that works. Because I can separate by addition subtraction, that's what makes that work. I didn't tell you you can separate by division because you can't. I didn't tell you you can separate by multiplication because you can't unless you have the constant that comes out. It's only, that's the only thing. So you can't separate by division. You can't do that. Only thing you can separate is addition and subtraction. You follow me on this? So when I, when I translate this into 3x to the 1 half, we've got to have something better than this, 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 over that. That doesn't work. What we could do is potentially split these up into three different fractions. So for instance, why don't we try to make it x to the fifth over 3x to the 1 half? minus 2x <coughs> over 3x to the 1 half, minus 3 over 3x to the 1 half. And then we'll try to simplify each of those fractions to make them fit in our power rule, and then take the derivative. Are you guys all right with what we're doing so far? We're trying to make it fit into this. We have to make it fit there. If we can't make it fit there, we can't take the derivative right now. Can you combine those? x to the fifth and x to the one half. How do you combine those? Negative three x to the negative half. Okay. What happens when you have common bases that are being divided? Do you add exponents, subtract exponents, multiply exponents, or divide exponents? Let me let me break it down even easier for you. Okay, watch. No, just watch. <laughs> there. Can you simplify that? Please, goodness, say yes. Please say yes, Mr. Leonard. I know how to, I'm, a, I'm supposed to be in this class. Yay. How do you simplify this? What is it? What is it? You subtract what? You subtract your exponents. Because when you divide exponents, you have four of them here. You have three of them there. You cross out three of them, you have one of them left, right? That's subtracting exponents. You go, oh, yes. This is completely gone. That becomes an x. What happens to the two? Go on the top, stay on the bottom. So you would have x over two. True? Or you could get one half x. Do you follow? Okay. So you know whenever you have common bases, you subtract exponents. This is not a hard concept. You've seen this since your algebra, beginning algebra days. Beginning algebra days. So can you combine these? The answer is what? How do you combine those? How did you, how did you combine those? Subtract what? Subtract your exponents. What's five? Minus a half. How much are you going to get? Four and a half. Give it to me as an improper fraction. Nine halves. Nine halves. Really? All right. I didn't do it in my head. Yeah, nine halves. I need you to be able to get there. That's not calculus. Okay, that's algebra. This right here, I mean, people have said before, you take calculus to finally fail algebra. Don't let that be you. Know your algebra. If you know your algebra, this is a piece of cake. I mean, really, honestly, calculus is easy if you know your algebra. I promise. And trigonometry. If you don't, yeah, it's going to hold you back a lot. Uh, are you okay on, firstly, going from here to here? Secondly, going from here to splitting them up? And now thirdly, do you see how to get from the x to the fifth over x to the one half into one third x to the nine halves? We're subtracting those two exponents, do that and calculate if you want to, five minus a half, you're going to get four and a half or nine halves. Minus. Let's look at those numbers, that's going to give me two thirds. 
x over x to the 1 half gives you what, please? 1 half. 1 half, good, because you subtract 1 minus 1 half and get x to the 1 half. Minus, oh, what's that become? This is supposed to be a new video. You have that old school ringtone on? Come on, man. <laughs> Give me some 50 cent or something. Oh, that's even old, too. <laughs> What's new? Uh, I'm on the edge of glory. <laughs> Give me that one next time, okay? All right, thanks. What happens to the threes? They become a one. What happens to the x to the one half? What are you going to have to do with that in order to make it fit that? What do you do? Can you leave it like this and take a derivative? No. Nope. That would be the scenario. That would be that scenario. What do you have to do to the one half? So we're going to have to move that to the numerator and make it a negative one half. Do you follow me? You're constantly trying to make it just look like that. That's what you need. So one over x to the one half? No. X to the negative one half? Yes. Yes. Show of hands, how many people feel okay with this so far? Simple algebra, good, all right, so you passed simple algebra. Very good. Hey, now that y, this is still y, I haven't even done, have, do you notice I haven't even done calculus yet? No calculus yet, this is basic, this is algebra. Now can you do the calculus, can you take a derivative? Why don't you carefully, right now, take me that derivative? Go ahead and do that, carefully take the derivative. I'd rather have the, Go slowly on it, by the way. I, I want the correct answer slowly rather than the wrong answer quickly. That would be stupid. Was that Lady Goo Goo, by the way? That lady? Yeah. Is that not right? That was perfect. Spot on. <laughs> So dy dx or y prime if you'd like. Note how each of these now fits into our format here. The constants, we could pull them out. We're just taking a derivative of x to the 9 halves, derivative of x to the 1 half, derivative of x to the negative 1 half. Let's do that piece by piece. I'm going to show you every step, okay, right now so you see where it's coming from. I'll have the 1 third times the 9 halves. You see where the 9 halves is coming from, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm going to have x to the, I need to do 9 halves minus 1, that's going to give me 7 halves. Did you get 7 halves as well? Perfect, 7 halves. Get that one? Next up, I'm going to have minus, minus, 2 thirds, 2 thirds. Times what, folks? Okay. What one half because that's my exponent that I'm bringing down. So I leave my constant alone. I'm multiplying by my exponent, and then I'm going to take x to the one half minus one gives you what? <laughs> Lastly, I have minus minus. What now? Okay, negative one half. Okay, great. So. Negative one half. I'm going to put that in parentheses saying, hey, I'm a negative, watch out. I have a negative there. So minus is minus. Negative, that's our negative. X to the 